I'm the type of gamer that likes to play the game and watch the cutscenes, but not really read any files, or notes, or really look up any lore for that matter. So I had the brilliant idea to talk about the game's story from yours truly, from my point of view, because I pretty much have all the qualifications, am I right? I mean, I got the game, I beat it multiple times, and I have a YouTube channel. So here I am bringing you Resident Evil 2 Explained. We start the game off with a thick boy cheeseburger and a truck driver. The driver is listening to the radio, you know, the thing before podcasts. And we hear this story about how this guy, we're gonna call him John, went out for the night. He saw that this girl, we're gonna call her Jackie, that looked kinda like, well, a zombie. The radio host is doing typical radio host shit and is trying to make light of the situation, saying how Jackie kinda looks like his wife. John says that he saw Jackie attack someone and then the radio cuts out. The truck driver tries to get a better connection until he completely obliterates this girl who's just standing in the middle of the fucking road. Buckle up, buckaroo! The driver gets out and is panicking, probably trying to figure out how to get rid of the body. And then we see the little girl actually get up because, you know, zombie game. We cut to the man, the myth, the legend, Leon S. Kennedy, pulling up in the foreign to a gas station. He sees an empty cop car and decides that that's kind of suspicious, so we go to check out the gas station. We find the cop bleeding out with a big ass chunk of his neck just missing and he points to the door. We go in and see another cop arresting someone. He turns around to tell us, God damn it, Rex, I got this. But he doesn't got this and the zombie ends up taking a chunk out of his neck now. So we shoot the zombie, take the keys, and God damn, look at that poster. Jesus Christ. We leave the gas station and a girl pops up. We save her, end up getting swarmed, put the moves on the zombies, and escape in the police car that we saw earlier. The lady is all like, oh my God, you're a cop? And I'm like, no bitch, I just wear this for shits and giggles. So different and so new was like any other until I met you. She says that her name is Claire Redfield, meaning that she is the sister of the main character in Resident Evil 1, which I will be doing a future Resident Evil poorly explained, but his name is Chris Redfield. She's out here looking for him, and then... Title card. We are heading to the Raccoon City Police Department and come up to a roadblock, so we decide to walk it. But before we have the chance to get out of the car, we get swarmed again and guess who shows up? Good old GTA truck driver from the beginning. But it looks like the little girl took a chunk out of his neck. So anyways, he's up to more of his shenanigans. causing us to get separated from Claire. We agree to meet up at the police department and we go on our merry way. We get to the police station and it's empty, and I mean completely empty, not a single living soul in this building. So we go into an area that literally says to keep out, and instead of heeding the warning, we go in anyway. We open a shutter and attempt to help out this officer, but we end up only getting his top half when we kind of wanted the bottom half attached as well. And let me tell you, Leon looks absolutely shook. I mean, look at this face. We leave the potential mermaid alone and take his notepad. We go back the way we entered but get grabbed by a zombie but thankfully we get helped out by an officer so apparently there is a living soul in here. And this is the same officer that actually got bit by Brad in the fucking third game. Fucking Brad, a dickhead if you guys remember. We find out that this is actually Leon's first day on the job and the lieutenant tells us to either take out the zombies or run. And my dumbass instantly thinks of Tina when he says to take out the zombie. Oh, okay, uh, Tina, I don't want to hear so about So I think I'm thing. being attacked by zombies and I start screaming, do you want to make out? And I make out with it. Hmm. But little does he know. <laughs> so I'm probably just as infected as he is. I always tend to check on this cop for some reason, probably because he looks like a rare steak. Yeah, I get my steaks medium rare or medium, so get at me. What's up, bro? What, bro? What's up, bro? Take a swing, bro. Right here, bro. 
We continue on until I get to this lock and I use the good old process of elimination method to get the correct combination. At one point, my pride just kind of kicked in and I was all like, no, I have to fucking guess this. I cannot look this up. So I sat here for a while and just guessed combinations. We then grab our first key and there are three of them that Leon could grab. We check back in with Lieutenant Future Zombie and he shows us that Claire is waiting for us outside. But before we can have a glorious reunion, I grab this lion medallion because you see, we need three medallions to open up a secret passage to escape escape the police department since the roads are kind of dangerous with the trucker out there. I make Claire wait in the rain a little bit longer because my selfish ass needs to worry about numero uno. So I grab a shotgun, I grab the second medallion for those of you that aren't counting, I put that medallion into the base of the statue, and then I finally decide that Claire is worthy of my time. But on the way I'm not too sure how or why but a fucking helicopter crashes into the building. It's blocking our path forward so we decide to take a side door to get to Claire. And just look at the romantic chemistry going on here. You could just see the love emanating from his 1998 style eyes. Claire hasn't had any luck finding her brother, then the helicopter just decides to explode and catches on fire. We make a pact to make it out together and I probably make one of my all time riskiest decisions and I turn subtitles off. That way you guys can't correct me since what I say is gospel in this video. We go back to check on the lieutenant and he's practically dead already so we might as well kill him, I'm not too sure why we don't. We grab this detonator and I bet you are all wondering what is this really used for? But I have no fucking idea, so don't ask me. Probably to blow something up. We fix the busted pipe problem that Carlos created for us in Resident Evil 3, and then we run into this creepy looking fucker, but thankfully they're blind. So we inch up as close as possible and completely blast its face in to make as much noise as possible. It doesn't like that and it actually turns into the biggest fight since Godzilla vs King Kong. Thankfully though, like ghosts, this thing can't go through doors. So I sit in this room and wait for him to forget since they have the memory of a goldfish and I end up killing him. We get a battery for the detonator, put the detonator on this here wall and boom goes the dynamite. We get the third and final medallion and put it into the base of the statue which opens up the secret escape that we didn't even know was real. The lieutenant whose name I just found out is Marvin growls at us when we wake him up from his nap which I 100% understand I'm the same way. Just look at how scared Leon looks right now he looks terrified. Leon tries to get him to come with us and he's like, mm, nah, and pulls a gun on us and tells us to leave. And Leon's all like, oh, say less. <laughs> and we leave him behind. We go into the passageway and this guy choke slams us through steel, so I'm not even sure if that's realistic, but we put enough bullets into him to make him think, you know, this sounded fun at first, but now I don't really want to do this anymore. And then he just decides to fall over a rail. I have three lives. Turns out that the secret passageway actually leads us to the parking garage of the police station. But we don't have a key card to open the shutter. And then boom, a zombie dog attacks us. Leon almost becomes dog food until Ada ends up saving us. We shoot the dog again, and then Ada shoots it a third time, cause this thing won't fucking die. Fucking god damn it! I'm trying to do the right thing here! He's really hanging in there. God. Fuck! Leon is all about the what's going on and where's she going and Ada's like bruh fuck off. So classic Leon sipping over Ada, we follow her through the door that she just walked through and told us not to follow her. Turns out that we don't see Ada there but we run into someone in the prison cell. Turns out that the chief actually locked this guy up and Leon's all like, I'm sure he had a good reason. This guy says that he was about to blow the whistle. Blow the whistle. For real though, he was going to expose the chief on some corrupt shit. He tries to make a deal with Leon to help him out of the prison cell, but something literally punches through the wall. And this random ass hand does what I expect every fucking villain in every game to do when they grab the protagonist's head. <laughs> Ada comes in and says that that guy was an informant for her and tries to leave, but Leon is all like, she then tells him to leave and then also says that her name is Ada. So the next part of the game actually doesn't really hold any value story wise. You just kind of run around and grab some shit to further progress the game. So I want to do a quick little speed round of what I do. We kill some dogs in some kennels because somehow some way they gain opposable thumbs and get out later I don't know how. We get the diamond key, turn on the power to the area, put a grenade in this dog's mouth, get a fuse, I kill this guy, put said fuse into this box to open the gate where the officer who's aspiring to be a mermaid got 
got ripped in half. Then have the same guy that I thought I just killed come back and take my virginity. We visit the lieutenant who has finally turned into a zombie, so we put him down for good. I do a little dance. I find the clover key. We extinguish the flame that the helicopter is under, and guess who comes to visit? A fucking bodybuilding detective. So I shoot his hat off and show him that I play Call of Duty Zombies and that I could do this shit all day, bro. I train zombies. We grab the handle to a jack. Go to the library and use the handle to lower this bookshelf and make a bookshelf bridge upstairs. We get to a room, mess with some gears, get an electronic part, then go back to the jail cell area. I'm not a fucking electrician, so I'm just turning squares half ass not knowing what I'm doing. Eventually though, I figure out the puzzle just by sheer dumb fucking luck. And that gives us access to the informant's jail cell, you know, the one who's got his head squished. We grab his tape recorder and it doesn't really say much, he's just kind of grilling an umbrella employee about an underground lab. and the umbrella employee is all like wait how do you know that we grab the garage key card that for some reason he has and then all the cells in the jail area just kind of open up and someone needs to tell this fucking guy that i'm a professional zombie trainer bro i'm training him like he's my fucking dog we get to the parking garage and he breaks through the wall like oh yeah and then ada comes through and runs him over like gta motherfucker And this dude still is not dead, so Ada's just like, fuck it, and blows up the damn truck. We escape the garage and Ada says that the information that the informant had was pretty much useless. We get to a gun shop where this guy gets the jump on Leon, but his daughter isn't looking too hot. Ada comes up and he points the gun at her, giving Leon an opening to point his gun at the guy. So now it's a classic 2v1 standoff right now. Ada's like, fuck them kids, we need to kill her. And Leon's all like, Ada, have some fucking sympathy, Jesus. The guy asks us, you're a cop. You're supposed to know something. How did this happen? And I'm like, bruh, I'm kind of the wrong cop to ask. It's literally my first day on the job. I no joke know as much as you do right now about the situation. We leave them be and we hear a gunshot, but this guy actually has a DLC where it shows that he actually had to end up killing his daughter and then he escapes Raccoon City. Ada says that her mission is to save the city and Leon is all like, you son of a bitch, I'm in. Ada says that the pharmaceutical company called Umbrella is secretly making bioweapons that turns people into indestructible monsters. Then there's an awkward pause and she just kind of randomly says that she's looking for Annette Birkin and how that Annette was the one who created and released the virus. Then it makes this weird moaning sound. <laughs> and we find out that Umbrella is actually controlling Raccoon City. We jump into the sewers and run into a juiced up version of Crocubot. This guy, the... Uh... The, uh, I am Crocubot. And avoid getting turned into alligator food. We blow him up and Leon hits him with the one-liner. Chew on that, you overgrown son of a bitch. We regroup with Ada and she has the fucking audacity to say, Can't say I didn't warn you. And Leon is like, bitch, you said it turns people into monsters, not reptiles. Then he's all like, so Umbrella is selling monsters? And Ada's like, no stupid, they sell the virus that makes the monsters. And then she goes on to say that Annette Birkins is even more dangerous than that alligator. And I'm like, I'd rather fight a woman than a mini Godzilla. We actually run into Annette and Ada tells her that we're there for the virus. Annette just kind of laughs and is like, no way, Jose. And then acts like throwing a match on this zombie right here is a big enough distraction. But now that I'm rewatching it, it's kind of a nice callback to the first game because if you didn't burn a zombie that you killed in the first game, they could respawn into something worse. So I see what you did there, Capcom. Anyways, Annette turns a corner and starts to shoot at us, but she has the accuracy of damn near any villain in any movie. Good thing bad guys are such terrible shots. Man, these guys are elusive. But Leon jumps in front of Ada to protect her and actually gets shot. Ada gives us her jacket, patches us up, and then goes to follow Annette while Leon naps, apparently with his eyes open. My dude's a straight fucking killer. So now we're playing as Ada and we do some nifty little spy tricks. Yeah. And then get this ID wristband, which I have absolutely no idea what it's for. And then surprise, the wristband was actually in a giant ass furnace and Annette's psycho ass tries to put us on fire. I think I might love her. We escape using some more spy gadgetry and eventually catch up to Annette and Annette is all like, Game over. 
and Ada throws a cheap shot and asks if Annette killed her husband so she could take the credit for the G-Virus. Annette is like, oh shit, I never thought of that. That's actually a good idea, Ada, but only gets really mad when Ada says that she'll just get a sample of the virus from the nest. Hearing that, Annette just goes full aggro and tries to kill us. Kinda like this virus means more to her than her husband. Ada gets an owie in her leg from the fall and is all like, Leon, oh Leon, wherefore out thy Leon? We cut to Leon and he's waking up from his nap in all of his block-shaped glory. So now that we're back to playing Leon, we are now on the hunt for Ada. And it just so happens that our trip takes us to the sewers. You know, kinda like every other Resident Evil game. I wouldn't say too much happens in this section until the end, story-wise, so I'll do another little speed run here. We fight this, god, I don't even know a good joke for this thing, but it takes my knife and I can't can't let that happen, so I end up killing it. Leon sees Ada sleeping, so now we know the general area that she's in. We grab a couple chess pieces and a flamethrower. Pretty boss flamethrower, right? I start to lose my born again virginity and my knife, and we can't have that happen. I run around the police department for all time's sake. Now, I have been called the chess master of my generation, but I have no fucking idea why there's a chess piece puzzle down here in the sewers, and that I need to get this puzzle correct or else I can't progress any further, but chess master cheddar unlocks the door with barely even knowing what chess piece is what. We get to the waste disposal doors where Ada is on the other side, but of course there's no power. So chess master electrician cheddar turns the power on, but when I do, slams through the roof so I can't go back. I cheese this part by standing underneath this fan, and the claw gets tired of not winning its prize, so it goes through the door. And it turns out that the claw is attached to the first mini boss that we fought. Who would have fucking knew? We throw a giant ass shipping container at this thing not once, but twice to make him fall again. I have three lives. And we run back to the garage disposal doors and rendezvous with Ada. Ada is one tough cookie and tells Leon to pull the blade out of her leg. Leon does so and then asks what the next move is. Ada's all like, you're leaving. And Leon's all like, no way, Jose, you ain't getting rid of me that easily. Ada tells Leon that we need to get to the nest, so we get to a gondola-type tram thing where she basically says that Leon needs to get the sample and that she's just a liability now. And Leon's all like, I'm not leaving you, what if you need help? And holy shit, Ada, what the fuck do that to me? That was, that, 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 that happened, that, that happened to be my, my first time with with the uh, lips and the and the and the and 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 and, and the, the the tongue the, that was your tongue I I I, I believe it, it was the I never did that before. She gives us the ID wristband to enter the lab, and Leon hits her with the line just as savage as Han Solo in Star Wars. Leon, I'm counting on you. I know. Now that we're inside the nest, or the lab, whichever you want to use, I use them interchangeably, I shoot this guy like I have a personal vendetta against him, we grab an upgrade for the wristband as well as an upgrade for the flamethrower, and then I get a sub on YouTube so I celebrate with the little dance. Leon said that the G-Virus is in the West Wing. Oh, East? I thought you said West. So I go the wrong way. We end up getting to this part where we need to make a solution to try to get this guy's key card that's pinned against the window by one of the plants. I grab the empty canister and then chess master electrician chemist Cheddar gets the solution into the canister and I try to put it into the system. But the computer says that the solution's temperature is out of the acceptable range. So I show the computer how acceptable my range is. I turn the power onto the lower area of the lab and get to a freezer of sorts and put the solution into the slot thingy and let the machine do its work. We get the new solution, go back up to the OG computer. Don't be near where I'm flame throwing. And I put the solution in and it actually works this time. Great success. I grab the new wristband ID, but the bodybuilding detective ruins any chance I get of celebrating. And I think the game wants me to run back the way I came, but I call an audible and go down the ladder and lose the fuck out of the tyrant. And just so you know, that was a poorly explained exclusive because I've never went this way, but it worked out. With the new ID, we get into the new area and the virus is just kind of sitting there and Leon says exactly what I was thinking. That was easy. The security system goes into lockdown and says that there will be a self-destruct countdown once the lockdown is over. We're about to leave and then this motherfucker shows up once again, but this time Annette hits him with some spitballs and it kind of seems to do the trick. <laughs> 
turns out that this monstrosity is Annette's husband, and Leon is all like, tell me the whole story from the beginning. So we get a little flashback of Annette and her husband before he turned into whatever the fuck this thing is, and for some reason he injected himself with the virus. Annette was all like, good golly Miss Molly, why'd you do that? Leon, however, don't give a fuck about her backstory even though he asked for it, and he tells her that, hey, you made this virus, so this is your fault. And it turns out that the spitballs didn't actually work. So the monster gets back up and this bitch Annette lowers us into an arena of sorts with the monster. She was literally like, well, I can't let him escape, so fuck you both. We put an end to William and Annette is all like, please tell me you'll destroy the virus. And Leon being classic, Leon is all like, uh, no, it's evidence. It's going to the FBI. And Annette tells us that Ada isn't actually FBI, that she's a mercenary and will sell the virus to the highest bidder. And I mean, if you've seen my Resident Evil 4 poorly explained, then we all kind of know that Annette is kind of right. Leon is shook at this truth bomb. I mean, just look at his reaction. And then Annette kind of just dies. We meet up with Ada and the place is quite literally falling apart and Leon is all like, nah, all of that can wait. Let's talk about what Annette just told me. It turns out Annette was right considering that Ada pulls out a gun on us. Ada wants the sample, but Leon doesn't want to give it up. So we're in a classic standoff. Everybody just calm down. Count of three, we're all gonna put down our guns. Then Leon pulls the classic, oh, we just kissed, you won't harm me, love trope. And Ada actually doesn't shoot Leon and instead, plot twist, Ada gets fucking shot. Annette spitball shooting Birkin chose life and then chose violence and shot Ada. Then the bridge collapses. Leon grabs onto Ada. The sample slips out of Leon's pocket and falls into the abyss. And Annette says the lamest one-liner to herself so no one even fucking hears it. No one gets that sample now. And then I think she dies. I'm not really too sure. She's kind of like the frog in Shrek 3. <laughs> Rocking is dead. <laughs> the bridge is gonna completely fall apart, and Ada tells Leon to take care of himself and then falls to her death. I have three lives. And my boy Leon is depressed. Look at this face. The self destruct countdown starts. So we get to the basement and find a monitor and Claire's actually alive. Which I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I completely forgot that she even existed. Claire tells us that there's a way out, but doesn't tell us how or where or anything helpful before the connection dies out. We continue on because, you know, there's a self-destruct countdown going on right now and bodybuilder Mr. Clean shows up and grabs us. And this is where I'm expecting him to do to us what he did to the guy in the prison cell. <laughs> But he doesn't. And then the walkway collapses. We get to an elevator of sorts and... JK, of course the bodybuilding Charlie Brown has to join us on this descent. We have a very close quarters fight with him, and it seems like we aren't really doing that much damage until a rocket launcher appears out of fucking nowhere. How about that? And then we see good old mercenary fake ass FBI agent Ada survive somehow and gifted us this rocket launcher. We grab it and turn the bodybuilding Tommy Pickles into some mannequin legs. We then catch the train and meet up with Claire and this random ass little girl that she just found. Turns out her name is Sherry and that's the end of the game. However, if you play through Claire's side campaign, you get an additional ending showing Leon, Claire, and Sherry topside. They run into a trucker that's driving towards them and we think that he might be infected but it turns out he's just a dick and he flips us off. Leon says as long as we stick together we'll be fine which I thought was kind of funny because we don't see them or interact with them at all after this game. Then Sherry wants Leon and Claire to adopt her and tells them that they could get a puppy and a parrot and all that other good stuff, kind of for a more wholesome ending. And then that's actually going to be it. So I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching. It was pretty fun making this video. I tried to use a little bit less memes, but I still thought it was pretty good. I do have to do Claire's campaign because she has her own story, where it differs from Leon and it has her own separate shit. So I'll be sure to get that done as soon as possible here. Sorry it took so long to get this one done, but that's going to be for me guys so i want to thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time